Perfect. Then if you can go to uh, menti.com and enter the code 5153-0913. Maybe I can also add it in the chat. Um, code. You want to see three zero nine thirteen? Yeah, yeah, it's it's that. Good. And oops. Let us know where are you connected from today. Um, for example, I am connected from Greece, although I was supposed to be uh, in a different part of the world at the moment for a conference. Uh, but today I'm connected from Greece. Good, we have Greece, uh, Switzerland, Cambridge, so UK, Budapest, Hungary, Italy, Spain. Yep, Sweden. Nice. Very good. Hi, everyone. I don't know if new people are joining, but hi to everyone. And good to see you here. All right. Uh, next question, and this is the last question that I'm going to ask. Uh, you know uh, about you. Uh, which domain or is this community do you belong to? So let's say I'm a, he's a librarian. So I am uh, under, where is it, where is it? Um, I would consider myself engineering and technology, to be honest. More social sciences, those two. So lots of social science um, participants, engineering and technology natural sciences, medical, humanities, and all. Great. And please feel free to, as we are moving on to the discussion, to um, you know, turn on your camera, your camera turn on your, your microphone. And again, this is add more, add more questions, uh, you know, post questions that you have to, 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 to this discussion. These were some uh, questions that uh, I added here just to help facilitate uh, our um, interactions, but feel free to, you know, uh, th th this is for, for all of us to interact, right? So, you know, a lot of discussion happens around data management plans. And in Horizon Europe, we see that not only the data sets should be documented, but also the part of the code, like you know, the software and other research outputs. This is mentioned as a term um, in the template and the guidelines. So um, it, it comes to, to, and to, to me, it gets confusing, let's say, uh, to me, to the outside, to someone that reads all those guidelines, right? gets confusing or can be confusing what is a dmp at the end but do we consider uh, a good oh sorry this is another question <laughs> what do we consider a dmp uh, and what do we consider a good practice for a dmp so um what is a good practice for a dmp for you um for me for example is um being able to um, provide this information either that, that, are, that is requested on the template or not. And if I give it to someone, they can understand exactly what I did, know what I used, and they can reproduce uh, my, uh, you know, if they follow my, my workflows, if, if they use my data, they can um, reproduce uh, research that I did. So what is it? A, a, a good practice for a DMP for you, for example. Uh, yes. Hello. I would uh, I would say something similar to you. 
transparently high. If you high. can identify, yes, if you can tell us. Oh, sorry, the... yes, I'm Fotis. I, I work uh, as part of the chemical engineering here at the National Technical University of Athens. I support the research lab essentially with EU funded projects and therefore I, I have to engage a lot with data management plans. And it is a very confusing document for some, <laughs> in some ways that you have to produce at the end of, uh, at the beginning of the project. Uh, so there are a lot of things I could talk about DMPs all day long. But to answer your question, I would say it's a an, it's an, uh, transparent accounting of what happens to data uh, throughout from beginning to end, from production to uh, how you are going to manage them with the, you know, uh, answering the questions that are part of the of the template, which is usually backup, storage, um, uh, security. Uh, if you have sensitive data, um, if you have confidential data, if you want to keep them closed or open, so you have to define a lot of things within that document. And I and I keep going back to the word transparency. So can you see exactly what? Even if your data is closed, uh, can you see exactly what is the process that was followed to make the data closed? And what does it mean closed? Is it still accessible somewhere? Uh, because that's 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 a big question as well. Uh, so, um, but it varies when you say a DMP. It's a project of that lasts four years. It changes uh, throughout the years. So. I think uh, that would be my answer for now, but there are a lot of elements I think that we could be talking about within the DMP and how to approach them. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for this. Yes, transparency, I think, is uh, it's what should uh, drive uh, the, the writing of data management plans and the recent data management activities overall. Um, British or others agree as well. Uh, anyone else who would like to take the mic? Um, hi, yeah, um, this is Anaritz from Italy. Um, I am a research project manager and I mostly deal with, um, let's say, um, biomedical engineer project, um, you, you funded projects. And I mean, one thing that would be really uh, great to have in uh, well, beside the yeah, standardized template, but also uh, information on the level of granularity we have to reach in those documents, which are really preliminary, and so you never know how far you should be. And some KPIs, which also uh, like self-assessment KPIs, uh, like a tick box page where you can say, okay, this is done, this is done, and this is done as the correct level of granularity. Yes, so by KPIs, you mean something that you can uh, feel that you're on the good, on, on the right path, uh, moving to towards evaluation at the end of the project, right? Like this is what Yeah, you mean. I mean, some key performance indicators, which could be either qualitative or quantitative, but uh, sort of sort of uh, self-check of mm -hmm. uh, what you need to achieve and how far you've um, reached to. You've got, yeah. Yeah, that's also uh, very important. Yes, and the granularity. I think it's 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 again it, it it's also a challenge um, that can make the writing of DMPs a really um, harder. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the KPIs could could help facilitate this. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for sharing this. You're welcome. Anyone else? We heard transparency, we heard granularity. Ah, I see someone has raised a hand. Julia. Yes, um, I am a, a, I was a researcher uh, till a few times ago about uh, um, uh, medical science. Uh, and uh, when I was working with the industry in uh, the pharmaceutical industry, um, the DMP was not called the DMP, but it was still part of the request of uh, the regulatory uh, uh, agency uh, in order to perform uh, uh, the uh, clinical studies. So every time we had to think about uh, the size of the data that we would like to have. And I think that the DMP is... Um, let's say training at some point of the early career researchers, but also the researchers to go into practice uh, that can translate the 
experimental research into something that can be even uh, commercial at a certain point or can be useful for uh, contextualize uh, the research in other field. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't think about the ethics or the commitment that we need uh, to provide us information and having in uh, uh, that directly in a template uh, can be very useful for uh, thinking about at least. Mm -hmm. But I like the um, what you brought here, the training. Uh, this aspect, but uh, in order to have a good DMP, you say that uh, you also sh should be trained uh, accordingly, right, to so the risk data management uh, uh, life cycle. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing this, Julia. Thank you. Anyone else? No, let's move on then to the next uh, question or, um, you know, uh, issue to, to trick our minds a bit. Uh, what does a good and complete DMP look like to you? Similar to the previous, but, uh, and I think the granularity part uh, can also be, um, uh, can also come here uh, to, to, to this um, question as well. It applies here. Um, but so you write a DMP, how, when do you feel good about it and you feel that you've completed it? Um, so if, for example, I'm writing it for a horizon project, I feel complete, uh, like when I have answered all the questions, let's say, that are requested, uh, and um yeah this is my my answer uh for this hi again i don't think i'm able to always answer all the questions uh, because again uh when you have to submit a deliverable like a dmp in, in month six it cannot ever feel complete so there's there's a problem in this process with with horizon europe because when they request the dmp whether it's a draft or the final version uh, i think there are stages and each stage looks different so uh, if i had to answer in the first six months my, my priority for example was to get a good account of uh, how many data sets and what kind of data we're going to produce i couldn't though answer fully the fair questions so it's impossible to do that before you have the data so it's, it's a balancing act i would say in the first stage uh, and i'm not able to answer about you know uh, what happens later in the project because I haven't done that yet. Uh, but I think, yeah, to, to some degree, answering all the questions uh, as effectively as possible would be a good good answer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you for this. I think you're right. There are different stages and different things that are uh, requested each time. But I see another hand from Joaquim Philipson. Joaquim. Yes. Uh, you want to you. identify yourself? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, so I'm Joachim Philipson from Stockholm University. I'm not an active researcher right now. I I was. I did my PhD a long time ago, but uh, I work as a research data manager, so I'm biased by that fact. And uh, I, I, I would agree with Fotis and, and others uh, who talked to the previous question uh, of all those necessary features about transparency, for example. And uh, I would say that uh, a requirement for, and I, I would also say that, uh, uh, agree with Fotis that uh, a DMP is a living document that is, updated during the whole re research uh, cycle. So, so you cannot say that it's complete until the project ends, <laughs> really. Uh, and uh, at Stockholm University, we have made our own DMP template, which we like to believe um, 
supports these uh, these uh, necessary features of transparency by being machine actionable we have very few free text answers we have check boxes and drop down menus to fill out and we explicitly state you don't have to to uh, uh, make a definite uh, choice uh, yet and uh, we archive that is we, we download the dmps at two different stages the first is when the head of department uh, that is the system in sweden has uh, so to speak um, uh, supported or, or accepted the dmp as fulfilling the funder requirements and the second stage uh, it, in the second time we we download and archive the dmp is uh, when the project is finished and uh, so so I, I i would agree with uh, uh, that there is no definite time uh, wh when it is really finished until it's finished so to speak <laughs> when the project ends I see. Thank you. Yes. Th thank you so much. Uh, uh, sorry. It's not Hakim, as I thought. It's uh, Joachim. Joachim. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. It's it's different layers. Yes. Uh, I see two more hands. Uh, so I don't know who was first, though. Uh, I see that in the chat first was Alan. So I'll. I'll um, do you want to, to say a few things? Yes, hello. Uh, so my, my name is uh, Alain Borel. I work uh, at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, Switzerland. I'm, uh, I work at the library as part of the research data team. And so we reviewed many DMPs, some, some very good, some very bad most of them in between, of course. And uh, yeah, all jokes aside, I think the, the main things I could say about a good DMP are actually not uh, related to the DM part, really. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a living document that, uh, that grows with the project. And uh, so, and everything else is really details that will be connected with the project, with whatever research is happening. And so, and so every case will be different and it's very difficult to say what is good or bad. So I want to perhaps take a, one step back and uh, just take the, the broad framework. And I would say that a good and complete DMP at one point if the in the project must be consistent with the state of the project and uh, also with the the description of the project so it must be realistic in that it really represents the understanding of the project at that point and uh, every information given in the plan must be uh, at least have some level of uh, of constituency. Of constituency. No, there should be no contradiction, no internal contradiction. And it's of, of often very difficult to say whether that is the case because uh, we don't always know more about the project than the DMP itself. So mm -hmm. that's a, an interesting challenge. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much. Of course, uh, yes. Uh, the, the the there is a, there are the templates, let's say, and what they um, require us to to add or what they suggest or encourage us to to add as information. But at the end, the those that are working in the projects know uh, how the DMP should look like and when it is it's complete, uh, according to again as you mentioned the. Uh, the project um, objectives and uh, the disciplinary aspects also of things. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, and Anna. 
Uh, yeah, uh, still me. Uh, so um, no, I mean, uh, uh, maybe it's a bit redundant what was already said before, but uh, to, to summarize a bit to me, um, uh, a complete DMP uh, is the one who, uh, which summarizes the whole life of the data in a project. So from the data collection processes and all that goes with it, uh, the current processing and use of the data in the project and what happens to the data after the project. So the past, present and future, I would say. That's what <laughs> I would summarize it, uh, this concept. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anna. Yes. So uh, basically, um, um, all, all the steps of research data management life cycle, yes. Okay, I see no hands, so I will move on to the next. How clear is the DMP definition for you? And this is what I, I, I was telling you at the beginning that uh, now DMPs are about software, about uh, protocols, about other research products, what are the other research products and how do we add them in the DMP? You know, how, how, how clear it is for you uh, when you go to write your DMP, uh, all those different uh, elements. Is it, let's say, let's, let's rephrase it maybe. Um, so do, do you feel more comfortable? Um, ah, we have a hand, but let me see if I can rephrase first for this and then maybe you can go ahead. Uh, so if, if I have to write a DMP, do I feel more comfortable or support someone into writing DMPs, right? Uh, do I feel more comfortable in advising for data, for software, for other research products? Where do we feel more comfortable? Um, and for this, you can go ahead. Hi, hi hello. Ah, hello. hi, Roberto. Sorry, sorry, I didn't know how to raise my hand. My it's, it's fine, just, it's fine. I just opened the microphone. <laughs> And um, well, I, I am uh, the um, data manager inside the European project, which is UAPS for data. And uh, in this uh, project, uh, we do uh, um, cascade funding uh, and we found uh, uh, experiments uh, uh, that must involve uh, SMEs, okay, so small companies. And uh, all experiments are on the use of data, are based on the, are data driven. Mm -hmm. So what I ask uh, to each uh, experiment, uh, and we have uh, three open calls, uh, now it's going on the second one. We had mm -hmm. 10 experiments in the first one, 14 in this one, and then there will be another, uh, another call soon. Um, what I ask to each experiment uh, um, is to produce a DMP for the experiment. But uh, um, in this, uh, and, and I recommended to use uh, this platform, Argos, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what do they find difficult uh, in the DMP definition? So we are, we are only talking about the data set. We are not talking about software. What they find difficult is that uh, um, uh, they, the questions that they have to answer are uh, a little biased towards uh, the generated data sets. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, but uh, uh, they are asked also to, um, to document, to describe the input data that they use because it's mandatory uh, from the European Commission uh, to describe all data that are processed in a project. Mm -hmm. So when, the, uh, when they have to describe the, the input data, the data that they, they collect from other external uh, data providers, they have to, to, to declare a lot of things uh, like the usage of metadata, the license, uh, the, how long they are preserved yes. and so on, which are information that belong to the, source, to the data source. Uh, they may even not know uh, what to write uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I don't know what to advise them <laughs> because I uh, I do think it's a little biased towards uh, documenting and describing the output, the generated data set. Yes. So what project is this? And I cannot, no, I'm sorry, so I cannot. You, is you, it Horizon 2020 or Horizon Yes, Europe? yes, 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 uh, yes. 2020. It, yes, yes. So uh, you don't have to document in the data management plan. Uh, yeah, you can document well, the, the uh, experiments, but. Uh, um, uh, there is a data management plan also for the project itself, uh, you have for data okay. project, but uh, since we don't really uh, have any control over the, we don't have a repository for the project, we don't have data mm -hmm. ourselves, mm -hmm. so it, um, it's just, uh, the, it's just uh, how we use uh, the information uh, I see. Uh, from our partners and so on. I but see. The data so set, for the open calls, you, you mentioned yes, you the, the, open call, the open calls. Yes, the open calls and the experiments are the real one that use the data set and produce data set. Yes. So, um, so, so the Horizon 2020 template uh, can be used for um, both the outputs. Uh, yes, maybe not that much. That the, because the mandate is on the research data that you have used uh, in when writing a paper. So those that, that you know validate your findings uh, on the paper. So um, maybe you're right that they're that they are a little bit biased. Uh, what I would suggest is that you contact like live, like I don't know contact Argos at Open.eu and we can uh, have a template that fits your needs so that you can use it uh, for the open calls. That's also possible. Oh, okay. Because it's outside the, uh, I understand that this is something different. It's an activity that's yes. different that you want to document the data. Yes, so we can do that. We can do that for sure. Who should I contact? Me uh, or Argus oh. at OpenNDU. Yeah, Argus at OpenNDU okay. and I can, I can um, take it up from there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, Joachim says it is defined by the DMP template. We base our machine actionable local template on the general science Europe model. Mm, yes, so the, this is about the definition, yes. Uh, and uh, Julia uh, Caldoni says I support research groups financed by Horizon Europe program and the most difficult thing to define up to now are the other research outputs, yes. I don't know if you want to say a few things, Julia. Uh, to open your mic and say a few things about this. But I, I, I can uh, totally relate with you. <laughs> hi, hi, Lelo. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I'm a data steward actually, and I'm just starting my support. Um, so I've seen like just a couple of DMPs up to now, but one of the most difficult things has been uh, to invite the researchers to um, uh, reflect on what these other research outputs could be. Uh, because many times I think that uh, they actually already know that they have these outputs, that they don't have only digital outputs. Um, I'm a biologist, so I think about like uh, cell lines or yes. um, samples, biological samples. And um, so I, I, I found difficult to help them balance how they should improve new um, methods to uh, implement fair um, management of these outputs and how uh, to tell them okay you're already doing this you're already like uh, naming the samples you are like versioning the samples mm -hmm. so maybe you don't have to um, invent anything new you just have to describe what you do because that's already kind of fair and that's the most difficult thing because uh, now we don't really know what um, Europe would like to see written in DMPs in this section so we're kind of them trying to to understand so i don't know if anybody has experience in this uh, in this paragraph because actually it's just a paragraph but it's really really challenging so thank you thank you julia but i think that you you approach it the, the right way like take the fair principles and see uh, what it's already 
uh, like how how the different outputs, like the others is outputs, whatever this means, um, apply them. Yeah, I think it's so difficult to understand what that means, what it means, because if yes. we have software, it's like, okay, that's simple to understand. But when we have like prototypes or uh, right, cell lines or stuff like that, it's, uh, it's difficult for me to understand and to help them understand that that's also an output of their research. Yeah. But yeah, we're trying, so <laughs> we hope it will be good. Yes. That, that's, can, I, can I offer my uh, sympathy yes. to, this, to this comment? Because uh, one of the projects I'm involved with, they do have a lot of prototypes to produce. And I'm not sure if other research outputs means actual, actually uh, talking about the, the samples they're producing, the, the, the experiments they do on, on physical material so in my dmb that i wrote for month six i didn't include that in my definition there uh, because i'm not sure how to manage the, the how do you the, the end i mean they will produce something from recycling processes so they will at the end come up with a solution to do better um, uh, recycling and recyclables and recyclates that's the definitions i'm working with so i'm not sure if i'm if i should put information about that kind of printing that they will do, because I think most of the prototype will happen through printing or some other means. So I don't see how I can follow through uh, on that, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think that definitely makes sense. And I, I actually um, came up with this definition because I'm working with a project that um, has prototypes produced too. And uh, I told them that they should describe what it's useful to reproduce their research. So not the final prototype, but maybe if they have like um, a midterm version, putting up together like experiments or pieces from different parts of the research and like documenting that because of course they would tell uh, they would talk about these products in their uh, publications probably and so they will have a reference they will be referenced somewhere so they just need to uh, make clear that these things exist so maybe photographing them uh, could be a documentation of this thing but uh, yeah I actually uh, didn't tell them to to do these uh, things on the final product but on the on the parts that could be useful for someone else to maybe reproduce the prototype in 10 years from now I don't know if that makes sense it my 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 comment is what I wanted to add was that I, I'm not sure if I can use that to make it open access, for example, fair is, you know, to make it findable, accessible. I don't understand how you make that kind of product at the end, which is other research outputs, uh, discoverable through fair means. And what is the point of that? And, and a lot of this information will be included in other deliverables. So when we talk about data management, I'm not sure why, what I categorize as data does not fall with that kind of further definition samples maybe yes because uh, you do have data that associated that is associated with samples that you get for example from from a lab uh, for example I, I, I had to uh, work with uh, something that that they took blood samples so there is data associated with with these samples and you had to make them anonymized and uh, all of these things so it makes sense for me to mention that, but even when I had these discussions with researchers, they were mentioning that this is all mentioned in the ethics uh, part. Why do we need to repeat that in the data management plan? And I, I, I sort of see the point. So we need to, I think they either need a broader definition of what is a data management plan or not call it data management or, <laughs> uh, or, or call something, it something else. else. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've, I would, I, I've, I've, uh, I've thought about it a couple of times. Why the why the D there now that everything else is needed to be documented? So yeah, maybe maybe we can call it something else, and maybe we include more parts. So like um, the ethics, the data um, access already existed. So other parts that are um, useful for management. I personally approach it from the Horizon 2020 uh, perspective where you focus on the publications first 
and that's my my guide as it were so i focus on what kind of data can be reproduced essentially yeah. because if something cannot be reproduced if something is very unique or it's just a unique experiment that there's no point maybe you can publish the methodology maybe you can show that what you do as a, as a lab or the work that you do in some way without revealing a lot of uh, intellectual property uh, that you own and I think that that's my focus on the data management. I, I, I can't share everything the way they are asking you to do it. I think it's impossible to manage that because it's most projects have more than 15 partners. How? <laughs> uh, I think it's it's impossible to, to put that in a framework, if you know what I mean. Yes, well, that's why the mandate is the mandate is only for the data of the publications, right? The underlying data. In Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe yes, is Horizon not very is, is Horizon Europe is not specific with that respect, and that's where the confusion comes with other research outputs, and that's why I'm focusing at the moment until I hear otherwise on software coding and simulations on other research yeah. outputs, which is something I can actually define and 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 make open because the the actual outcome, the physical products, I don't see how they fit in this. Yes. If I can, I would like to thank Fotis for this insight because yeah, it was really helpful for me. Uh, as I said, I'm just starting the support, so I I couldn't see that clear, right? Uh, how to manage this paragraph and this part of the DMP. So thank you very much because it would be really interesting for for the reflection from my side. Thank you. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you both, uh, Julian, for this. Uh, and then I will move on to the next question, which is, um, well, it was mentioned, hidden maybe in this, and in Julia's actually answer, how clear is the third definition for you? And I think if we tie the third to the others' it's outputs, we've already said it's, it's difficult to understand. But, um, do, do we feel like after completing a DMP, are, are we com, um, like say, confident that the, our data and software and everything is fair? Do we miss like, how do you feel about it? I understand that there's a difficulty in approaching FAIR in different disciplines, as already mentioned by Julia. And I see hands. Let me see, let me see, let's go. I don't know who was first. Let's go with Alan. Yeah, I, I think Fotis was first, but uh, I, I, I will be ah, short. Ah, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, okay. that's okay, that's okay, Alan, go, go ahead, go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I think, the DMPs usually make uh, at least a reasonable job of addressing uh, F, A, and I. But as for the R reproducible part, um, it seems to be that it's often difficult to tell from the DMP whether the data can actually be reproduced. Findable, okay. You need to propose some solutions for that, accessible, interoperable as well. But the, the reproducible part, I think, is uh, often not mm. really there. Just to say that uh, for the fair, it's not reproducible, it's reusable. Reusable. So, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, reproducible uh, is what okay, so how clear is the fair definition for you? Okay, 70, <laughs> seven, 75 percent, I would say. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, yeah, but, but even even right. reusability is uh, still often uh, a weak point uh, from, yeah. uh, from my experience. For this? I think, Ellie, we've had this conversation before about interoperability as a challenge. Uh, what I want to say is I know, I think, in to some degree, how to make everything fair. So, for example, if, as I said earlier, if, if there is um, an experiment in this lab, 
uh, in there if I, if I document the protocol, the methodology, the numbers, the conditions, the measurement, the experiment, the, the, the model of uh, the instrument that is used, everything. And if I make it possible that everyone can search for something, find it, access it through licensing uh, or a repository, then that makes it reusable. Uh, even if it's, you know, let's say in the best possible conditions, you make that open. I think that's okay. I think the, the biggest challenge is the interoperability of machine-readable, actionable things like data moving across systems and platforms, which this is not clear to me yet. And we've had this conversation before about how challenging this can be. But I think to some extent, verification can be achieved even with not having a full uh, interoperability, let's say, um, completion rate. But to some extent, if you provide enough documentation to make the, up the context and to that the conditions that you need to reproduce an experiment, even if you can't give them exactly the, the data that you have, as long as there is the, the process somewhere documented, um, then transparently, as I said in the beginning, then I think that's, that's as fair as it can be, if you like. Okay. So what I'm hearing from, from both of you and from others, actually, since the beginning is that Apart from FAIR, uh, we have like, well, not maybe apart from FAIR, but uh, rep reproducibility uh, is key uh, to, and it's what drives actually um, the documentation uh, of, of practices, of instruments, of, of models, of, of, of all the different uh, outputs and elements uh, in your research. Um, along with FAIR, and understanding how FAIR can be applied. So, uh, Anna? Yeah, so one other thing. Um, I think that less, more emphasis should also be made on the concept of data model. Let's say data standard like OMOP, FIRE, and um, all that regards uh, the definition of a common data model for the project and uh, possibly taking into account existing data models. I think this is still underestimated as an aspect for DMP. Mm -hmm. it, it, so it's not, I mean, mean so, sorry, sorry, please. You mean at the, at the level of the project, not even the discipline? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, because it's not stressed, uh, uh, at least as far as I remember. So this is, data modeling is an activity that we usually do in projects, but it's not stressed so much uh, in uh, DMP. And I think this should be at least on a high level considered, like which standards you, you use and uh, yes. how this applies. Yes, so actually there is this data alliance um, is working on this with the, um, the DMP common standard and you know all the different um, properties that they introduce. So maybe what I'm hearing at least uh, is to translate this into a template and provide uh, a common um, framework, let's say, uh, for, for templates around this. Yes. Not only, yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, I see the time is running. So let me see, I have more questions, but... Uh, uh, let's uh, see which ones to to answer. Ah, what are the most difficult out of research things that you wish you shouldn't deal with in your data man in the data management plans? So, what is uh, one or two things that are requested or um, encouraged to have in the data management plans, but it's out of your understanding uh, of of you know what you can support so you have to turn to others to support and who are the others that you that you turn to for this it's fine it's it's a, a, I, I like the data management therapy uh, the, maybe we can call the community because like this <laughs> uh, okay um, I really like the, the discussion the chat can you do you want to to um, you know, give us your views on that, on that question. So 
especially uh, there are a lot of we are a lot of people here that support other uh, researchers so um yeah if i may i, I don't yes. know how to raise your hand i <laughs> mean either please please so, uh yeah i am have to agree with the guys talking in the chat because people it's really difficult <laughs> to deal with uh, mostly when you have to uh, write a dmp or support the writing of the dmp for um um a group of people a group of researchers i'm oh, sorry like um partner partner I, I don't know how to say it in english <laughs> i'm sorry partnerships thanks to my colleague and um so um, that's very difficult because you have to explain these things uh, all the things that you have to put in the data management plan to the researchers you are dealing with in your institution in my in my case and then they have to report all the things to their partners and often they or probably they already know everything or um, they actually don't know and don't want to hear. So you don't have this one to one. In my case, I don't have this one to one interaction with them. So it's very difficult to make them understand why they should do that, because it's not just like you have to do it because Europe is asking you, but it's actually because it will benefit you. And if they don't want to listen, that's there's no way to make them listen. So that, yeah, I really have to agree with the guys and uh, um yeah sorry <laughs> that was my five cents on the <laughs> question thank you Julia. so the human aspect uh, yeah. basically yeah thank you i don't know if anyone has anything else to say maybe let's see um another question uh, Maybe uh, let's uh, let's move position ourselves in the future <laughs> and think of what we want and how we wish things in an ideal world to be around data management plans and how how does the future look like to you uh, around DMPs? How do you think DMPs can help you? I, sorry, can I just offer my to yeah my thoughts on this yes. the phrasing of the question? I don't th I don't think DMPs <laughs> can help us in in any way. If I had my thought when I read this question is what I would love in the future would be to actually speak to someone from the people who evaluate DMPs and look at what they think is good practice because at the moment i think it's between the it's within the communities that we think oh this is this is a good idea this is yeah you're doing it the right way we're doing it in another direction and in order to get consistency and simplicity with these things not for the sake of simplicity i mean it's already complicated to to do what they're asking us to do and but i think it's important to be able to get some project officers that they review these things and just um get their thoughts on different DMPs and say, you know, you know, these elements are good, these elements are bad. Because, for example, we received some comments on a DMP and it said it talked about exploitable results. Uh, and if, to clarify the position on exploitable results, and I'm thinking there is not an, a single word on exploitable results on the DMP templates So yes. pro, from, from the EU. So I don't see where this comment is coming from. I don't, I couldn't link it to something that was written in the DMP. Um, I've told you, Ellie, uh, personally, that there are some practices uh, within EU-funded projects that are odd in terms of how they manage a data management uh, platforms and what they consider data management. It's a little bit contrary to what I understand it to be, where my focus is uh, more paper peer review paper, uh, you know, uh, driven. Um, so these are the things that I think in the future. Um, I would love to say, I would love to have a meeting with a few project officers and say, you know, this is the direction we want you to take and just get their yeah. take on it, not just comments on different, because there needs to be consistency on what is a good DMP or on, on what is a DMP. 
totally, totally agree. So um, in the context of the ESP Association Task Force for Fair Metrics and Data Quality, uh, there has been a white paper, I think it's out already, um, but we worked on that, uh, not me, but the, the uh, other members of the task force, uh, on um, providing the guide, um, guidelines, um, opening the discussion, let's say, for a data, for a fair assessment body, governance body, to be established so that it's easier to understand what fair means in different uh, disciplines, uh, what does it mean for different um, for di different um, things to be fair and to, 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 to be fair compliant, uh, either when creating software or when describing the world where when reusing or generating data and so on. So I see your comment more towards the this fair like, like the governance part. So um, yes, thank you. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's something that will really help. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and we have four minutes, so I will skip to the fun part, <laughs> um, the trivia time. Let's see how well you know Argos now. Talked about the MPs, talked about the future, and uh, to, you know, puzzled ourselves. Um, let's let's see. Again, the winner will have the possibility to create one template of their own in Argos, uh, guided uh, by our team. Right? Please, okay. When you're ready, we start. This is time. So you have to be quick. There will be five questions. Not only one answer will be correct. So there, there may be multiple answers that are correct from the list of the provided answers. So with that, five, four, three, two, one, go. Ah, they give me more time. <laughs> okay, I can use Argus to describe. Data sets, software, my life, policies. Be quick. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Data sets and software uh, is the, 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 the correct answer, but it's good. Maybe you didn't know that, so now you know something, right? Uh, it did, and just to say, it didn't give me the, the, the option to press both data sets and software, which I would have done once really? I click data sets, once I click data sets it, it didn't give me the opportunity to answer something else. It's okay, then maybe I didn't test it correctly, sorry. Then maybe, well, the, it's then up to the, the fastest only, not to the most complete answer. Sorry about that. Okay, next. After I finalize my DMP in Argos, I can go drink a coffee or beer, according to preferences and time, uh, publish it and get DOI, leave it there and pray it did its job, and do finalization to fix add something that I forgot. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, publish it and get DOI, and also and do finalization and fix uh, at what I forgot. Next. To work with others in Argos, I can invite them on the whole DMP, call them on Skype, tag them on Twitter, invite them on the data sets I want them to contribute. Invite them on the whole DMP and on particular data sets. Next. So it's one before the last. What automation did Argus introduce at the beginning of the year? So this gets tricky. This one and the next uh, questions are tricky. APIs, prefill, exports, or uh, Zenodo publication. 
Yes. <laughs> so you, yes. So the uh, in January or February we introduced the prefilling of DMPs with information that are coming from other uh, sources, basically the nodal, um, and we're now exploring to expand this. Good. Um, five of you already knew that. I'm I'm impressed. And the last. Okay, ready. What is the next feature that is released by the end of the year? We, told, we talked about this in the previous community call. So is it new exports for DMPs, machine actionable table to list and describe data sets, more repositories to publish DMPs, or more pre-filling options? One of those things is going to be released soon. Yes, so it's machine actionable table to list and describe data sets. Good, uh, I'm really impressed. So th those five people, uh, I don't know if, if you are the same than the, with the previous question, but well, well done, because uh, it was the trickiest. And let's see who was first. Woo. Okay. So Julia was the fastest. Congrats, Julia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was we fun. Can, we can now work together, like, you know, have a meeting and work together to create your own template uh, in Argos and, and use it yeah. as you like. That would be really interesting because we, we are really looking forward to do that. So yeah. <laughs> I couldn't that imagine winning, but yeah, okay. See, you never know. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Well, uh, congrats to everyone else, uh, ex, you know, except Bianca, I don't know if they're the, the correct names, uh, but yeah, congrats to everyone. Thank you for, for, for um, taking this quiz. Stop sharing because we are, I think we are over time. Yes, are we? Well, thank you very much, everyone. That was really nice to talk about uh, all of those things uh, uh, with all of you. And I like that you also had to, to, to say a few things, you know, exchange uh, experiences and good practice with each other. So that's always a plus. And this is why we're doing this community calls, not only about Argos, but for, for you know, to, to be better, uh, to be able to better support research um, and researchers. Uh, and with that, uh, I don't know if you want to add anything but I would wish you a nice rest of the International Open Access Week. And I will, uh, we will resume for uh, next month, right? Yeah, next month for the last community call of the year, I think it is. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.